Um, so how's everybody feeling? We got one week to go. Yeah, good. good. Yeah, you guys excited? Yeah, I think went there this weekend. Oh, you did? Yeah, we walked the route. Perfect. That's one of my things I was going to bring up today. If you if you don't get a chance to do it, that's okay too. But just remember the percentage of climb rate, that percentage of incline on that Memorial Causeway is tough. It's tough. I almost think it's tougher once you get over it and you come back up. It, it, yes. it climbs a little quicker on the way back over. So just remember that after you get that nice glass of water, turn that corner and come back. But so no, nobody has any new injuries or anything like that? Are training's going well? That's going well. I had a question though, like, the like recovery uh like the next day i feel really green and exhausted is that normal yeah yes okay yes. so what try to, do to just think about make sure you eat that night eat something good for dinner maybe some pasta or something like that to like reload a little bit mm -hmm. some high protein whatever works for you mm -hmm. you probably know that from previous stuff but sometimes pasta used to be my best friend and now i prefer if i have a little protein and some nice veggies or something like that that works best for me when I'm feeling tired, mm -hmm. sluggish the same thing, whether it's from working an event or running an event like that. But, um, and another thing is to make sure you're getting lots of water. I think that's a lot of it. Yeah. And I wonder, uh, maybe even electrolytes, uh, are they out of, because yes. I'm not doing enough. Yes. And I'll tell you, there will be a little sample packet of electrolytes in your goodie bags. Oh, we cool. just, part of the reason I'm in shorts today, um, I just had this shirt. I said, oh, i got to be coming a little bit of a nicer shirt. <laughs> we just finished stuffing the goodie bags at about 1.30 this afternoon. Mm -hmm. The place where we go to get them stuffed is a correction center, and they were being audited. So we couldn't get in there until the last minute, so they called them, get over here now. And so we were rushing to go do that. Um, and we got a few donations that we went and picked up while we had the truck. But, um, yeah, so I would just I'd think about that lots and lots of water, and we'll go through some of that stuff today. <coughs> but um, biggest thing. Don't stress. No stressing. <laughs> you guys have made this. You guys have been on. Every single one of you has been here for almost all, all four of the sessions. Um, I think you guys are going to do well. You're going to have a great time on, on next Saturday. One week. I keep saying one week from today, but for me, my day starts Monday. I have my first packet pickup here. Mm -hmm. So my week's over, and then the race is on Saturday. And we just go from packet pickup to packet pickup to packet pickup. <laughs> so... Today, somebody said to me, stop stressing, we're going to make it. I said, no, we got to get this goodie bag stuff. we got to go here, there, and everywhere. So we have all this stuff that we have to pull together. All my guys go out of town this weekend to put on another event. I'm like, I'm here by myself? What? So anyway, but biggest thing, stop stressing. you got the number two thing, which is, um, let me go ahead and do this. Um, cover the route beforehand. Um, like I said, the bridge is the best thing to know about. And if you have one or something close to you, maybe throw a few flights of stairs in here at work, you know, to, to try to do that. Um, and then again, like we were talking before, eat what works for you. Um, and you're gonna wanna make sure you get ready the night before. Um, so, like we talked about last time, biggest thing, don't go doing anything new next Thursday and Friday night. And especially don't do anything new on Friday, okay? Um, you want to relax a little bit, elevate your feet. Um, and if, if, if anything, make sure you get a good meal. I wouldn't totally agree with that graze thing. Um, but my biggest fear with you guys is I'm giving you your stuff on Monday. Don't go losing it. But if you lose it, it's okay. You're just going to come back. And you're going to stand in line again. And I'm sorry that these don't have names on it because I know you guys are already pre-registered. The only p missing piece we have for this race right now is the bib. And we don't know where it is or when it's going to land. But it's supposedly coming off the printer maybe today. And we just still don't know when it's going to land. But this is the big, the big next thing that they're talking about. And I'm going to give you guys a goodie bag that we stuffed today. Um, you're going to get your t-shirt. The t-shirts are already done. We never have this happen. It's usually the bib comes first. The t-shirt comes <laughs> at the oh, last no. hour. Yeah. Um, but you're going to get this bib on the back. On, and every, for you guys, you guys are going to have a personalized bib. Mm -hmm. This is from another race. On the back is going to be this foamy piece. Oh, no. It looks like a label underneath there with a number on it. That's your timing device. Oh, okay. So the only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to fold, bend, or mutilate oh, this okay. thing. I typically, when I carry them around, I roll them just like this, but um, sometimes you'll go to a race and it'll be a smaller, um, there'll be a smaller bib like this. It just depends on what that particular race wanted. But along with that timing chip on the back, you'll, there'll be a label on the back 
and the girl that does the label, she prints them the same way all the time. It's gonna have your last name and your first name. It's gonna say which race you're doing. 5K to the half or the kids dash. So your, the kids stuff will be on there. It will also have on there that you're a female 24 mm -hmm. or a male 42 or a male 62. And on there as well on that bottom line will be the t-shirt size that you order. Oh, Okay, so Sarah, that's going to yeah. help you out hugely because you're going to take on some stuff. Yeah. But we're going to try to have your bags that you're going to take kind of pampered up. Okay. And um, yeah, if not, I I plan on printing out the spreadsheets for okay. each and location I think, and have them album, album size and then yeah. Um, and the only ways. thing that we're going to struggle with is those other people that yeah. some of those employees that friends of and stuff like that. Yeah. So the one good thing will be. We'll probably take and put that label, I mean, that yeah. thing down in the bag, and okay. their t-shirt sizes on there. We'll, okay. I'll go through a couple different scenarios on Monday that you can yeah. do with that. I think it makes it easy for yeah. you. Because the hardest thing is taking some of these extras on. I know. And then usually my problem is they're oh. my friends, and I can't ever get rid of them. Yeah. And then they're running around race morning because nobody can find me. Susan, what would you do with their bag? It's in my car. Because yeah. <laughs> I've had a couple employees tell me, like, because... You know, some may be at a different location mm -hmm. that day, so they're having a friend who works for another doctor pick theirs up. Mm -hmm. So I said that's fine because they're like, "Do I need their ID?" This and that. And so no, no we're not going to do IDs right here. here that yeah. we don't need that. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure that I wrote down next to the name. And so for any of those people that come on Saturday, yeah, they don't need ID either. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. On Saturday, we don't expect them because half the people leave all their stuff in the car. They yeah. come all the way to, from the parking space to okay. the actual registration tent. So and usually on Sundays, we don't ask. But what we do ask is if you come up and you want to pick up 10 bibs, yeah. hey, do you have some kind of ID on those other people? That just tells me that that person gave her a copy of their photo ID yeah. and they know she's getting it. Because okay. then we have the person that picked up 25 bibs but didn't tell Nancy. And Nancy comes along and, yes, I am registered for the race. Do you have any? No. Mm -hmm. Do you have any friends that would have picked up your, do you have a vanity name, I call them. You know, women yeah. that have that hyphenated name, that's kind of right. a thing sometimes when we can't find them. Mm -hmm. No. And then it ends up that Sally picked up her bib and they get in a big old argument because she mm -hmm. picked it up and didn't ask to pick it up. <laughs> I've seen it all. But anyway, so the bib. But the most important thing about this for Saturday is make sure you have it on the front. A lot of people that do the 5Ks for the first time, inevitably they put that thing on the back. The, the reason you put it on the front is one, so the, the radio transmitter can read this timing chip when you come through and it just gets a better read. Here, anywhere you want to put it here is fine. You can t put it on your short like you're running a professional track meet, however you want to do it. But m this is the best place to put it. But the most important thing is, does anybody know why you want it right here? So you can get that photo taken. Mm -hmm. And then the photo company, by bib number, and then I give them your names to match up with the bib number, it was, we'll email out and you'll have the chance to look at the photos and see if you want them or whatever. So is there like an adhesive that they'll peel off? Is that the... No, it just it stays on there the whole time. You don't peel it off. No, but how do you stick it to your shirt? Oh, so you're going to get four safety pins. Oh, I see. There's okay. four holes. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. And the other thing about the bib that I did not want to forget is you guys are going to have a gear check tab because there is gear check. Mm -hmm. Remember I was telling you, you can leave your phone. Nobody will take your stuff. You're going to rip oh, this okay. off if you want to do gear check. This one just says T-shirt, but this is from another race. It'll say gear check, and you're going to rip this off, and you'll put it with your little bag and check it into the gear check. And the high school kids will take care of all the stuff in the gear check. And that's how they sort, and they just care by numbers. And then you come back, they see your bib number, and they give you your bag to match that's with that. That's a good idea. So that, that is um, going to be a big thing for you guys, but know where that bib is on Friday night. Have your stuff you know, kind of sort of packed up. Um, so you're ready to go, the safety pins. If you get to the race and you can't find the safety pins, don't worry about it, come back to the registration tent and there'll be safety pins out in front of the bins mm -hmm. that you saw when I was here. The safety pins will be laying out in front of there and you can have some more. Mm -hmm. I have millions of safety pins, not a big deal. If you lose this bib, if you get halfway to the park from Tarpon Springs and you're like, oh man, I don't know what I did with that bib, come and I'll give you another one, but it won't have your name on it, yeah. so don't lose that bib. Okay, because that is pretty nifty that they started, yeah. you know, personalizing those bibs. Um, you know how often you have to go to the restroom. Mm -hmm. So you do want to sip, sip, sip. But remember, get your eyes on where those portalettes are, which are in the parking lot. So if you have to go to the bathroom, you can know that at mile 1.5, you're going to get a nice big cup of water. Mm -hmm. 
and the little kids will be on the other side of the median. So if you want another one when you get around the corner, if you feel like you're still parched, you can get another one. The temperature's dropping. So, I mean, it's not gonna be 49 degrees next a week from Saturday, but it's gonna, it, it has been a little cooler and it mm -hmm. will be cool on that water, on that waterfront. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, so, so know that. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure you arrive early. What I say is try to get there. You've got all your stuff. Get to a parking space about an hour early and then walk down there and get yourself acquainted with the landmarks, where you're going, here's the stage and you, the stage is on your left and you look directly out into the, at Clearwater Beach, the finish line's right there. There's no way you can miss it. It's a big old truss and it has all the signage and everything on it. So, and if you can't, if you get down there and you can't figure out where you're going, just ask somebody and they'll know, okay? Um, bring a trash bag. The trash bag is only if it was probably cold or gonna be raining and you use it like a rain jacket and then throw it in the garbage. So it's good for, you know, warming up and stuff like that. Um, Extra tissue, if you're somebody who uses a lot of tissue, like the girl that works with me is always carrying around a whole box, so I never have to have tissue ever in my life, and that one day when I need it, she's got that whole box of Kleenex. <laughs> I just go to her and get it, but know where your Kleenex is if you need it. Um, watch that temperature. I haven't really seen it out that far yet, and I'll start looking at it probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, don't overdress. It's, it'll get warm quick. But it's going to be dark when we all first get there, so you, you know, just want to make sure you can feel comfortable. And don't forget, completely trust that gear check. Bring that, bring a bag back. It doesn't have to be the, the bag you're getting is from the DuPont registry. It's a nice green plastic bag with two handles in it. It's not a recyclable shopping bag, but it's plastic, it's heavy duty. If you want to use that, you can turn it in there. If you want to come in a Publix bag, they're going to have little zip ties and they'll attach your little number and pull the zip tie on it, cinch the handles in you'll be good to go. So you can wear what you want because they're having gear check. Um, and that day, set at least two goals. If one of them is to make it to the first water stop and drink two cups of water, these goals can be crazy out there. Fin just finish the race and finish the race and have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's some it'll be something for you to brag about. Um, I like this line, line up early. There's gonna be some fast people out there. So I'm currently looking for a place for two Kenyan runners that place fourth and fifth in the Boston Marathon to, to stay. I'm like, I don't, and they gotta be five miles from the start line and this and that. I'm like, are you guys really coming for real? <laughs> so anyway, the really fast guys, this race has a, has a big prize purse. The Dog and Arrow family has put up a, a prize purse for this race. I'm not as big as it was last year, but we have faster and more runners in, in the elite status than we have in the past. So kind of just, though, um, just get in where you'll feel comfortable, but don't get in toe in that front line. Know that there's probably some little kids there that are gonna run like jackrabbits and trample you down. And, <laughs> and these guys are gonna be in the front. We're gonna try to keep the people back and keep those elites up in the front. Um, you'll see both a, a, a big elite field for the half marathon. So if you're doing the 5K and you happen to be around there, it's a really cool shot. Um, in the past, Dr. Gills has been right up in there on the front and he does have a number that is making him as an elite runner. We gave it to him. Um, so know that and then for the 5K, you'll see them line up. There's not as many of them for the 5K. There's probably gonna be more local last minute runners than there ever have been to go after that money for the 5K prize purse. Um, well, there's a, there's a purse on the 5K. Yeah, it? there's a smaller purse on the 5K. Huh. And um, we had just decided to do that. But we usually include in a prize purse the masters folks, 40 and up. Okay. And those two ladies, we have two ladies and one man. They're really pissed off. But hey, the family wanted to put all the money into just first, second, yeah. and third overall. So that's how it's going to be. Um, but it will be really interesting <laughs> to see these guys take off. and. These guys are going to be really fast. Did you hear this weekend that another Kenyan broke the two-hour mark for the yes. marathon? Yes, I heard and that. And on Saturday at the Chicago Marathon, I don't know what her time was, but the female broke the world record for the female marathon time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Crazy, but two hours, and it was so cool. I was hoping Byron would be here because I wanted to, to ask him if he saw it to see the way they ran this guy. They had five guys lined up like this, one here, one here, and one here, and he was right behind them, and it was like, bike a time trial and then a bike yeah. and they actually had a laser on the ground and these three these four people that were on the outside knew that they had to be towing the line with that laser to make this guy break the record wow. so it was, i think it was kind of unfair but it's unofficial you know yeah. it wasn't but it was a, the first time anybody's ever broke that two hour mark so um that's over 13 miles an hour that's 
Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing is just stay slow and even, and that's why I was saying don't get up there to run in the front. Everybody's going to be, some people on the front, regardless of, of what you say or what you do, are still going to run a 100-yard dash, and like the little kid that I always see, craps out and walks the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. So you're going <laughs> to see get that. all excited. But, you know, just get in, the, get in the back, get in the middle is what I say, just jump in, um, and, and just see how you feel and how you do. One thing I did want to tell you guys, if you guys have a great time that weekend, know that on Thanksgiving Day in Clearwater, Clearwater High, we have one of the best races, and I have nothing to do with it. I run it every year, and I'm going to miss it this year since I was a little kid. But the turkey trot the turkey at Clearwater trot, yeah. High, if you've never done it, is a great experience. Uh, there's start, starting to be a lot of other little turkey trots, so it's kind of pulling numbers down a little bit, but it's to the tune of about 30,000 people wow. running through those neighborhoods around Clearwater High School. Just really cool. It's just a family tradition that my family's done for forever and a day. But um, okay, aid stations. Most of you guys, everybody here is doing the 5K, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, my favorite, favorite little group of volunteers are working there. Very experienced at that station, provided they get there on time. <laughs> um, otherwise, my guys will be out there working it. But um, they're really, really good. A lot of times when you go to a race, you'll see something like this with the cups that are on the table like this just left there for you to pick up. But most of these little kids actually will get out in the street for you guys. And you guys will have Zephyr Hills cups because there's only gonna be water at that first station. Um, but they're gonna hand you a cup that's only about halfway full. So my recommendation is they're pretty skilled with doing this and they know to have it on a, on a two finger pinch out there for you guys. And you guys are just gonna run by and just take it out of their hand. But one of the first things I recommend is that you pinch the cup off like this and then you can keep it with you for a little while and drink some and save some. Now remember, you're only getting about a third of a cup. Yeah. So, um, but it's fresh Zephyr Hills water out of a plastic gallon jug, <laughs> but it's not coming out of a hose from the fire hydrant. Just know that. <laughs> so um, you can run through it. You can stop, even though that says don't stop short. You can stop and walk through there and drink it. If, you're ha if you've been struggling along since you've been training and kind of cramps your belly a little bit, feel free to stop, walk, and then and, and drink the water. Um, but like it says, just pinch and sip and just take it down. Don't worry about it. There's plenty of water back there. You're not wasting anything. If you don't want the whole amount that they gave you because they didn't pay attention to me and they gave you a full cup of water, well, just throw it out on the ground. And then their job after all of you guys have passed them by is to go pick those cups up off the ground. Okay, there may be a garbage can. You may make the garbage can or you may not, but don't worry about it. That's what the kids do. They're a little league football team from oh. South St. Pete. And I grew up with the one guy and his brother and sister, and he works at a community at that community center, and this helps them to get their uniforms and stuff like that. They're kind of out of the realm of what the race provides Clearwater for youth, for the kids that can't afford to play sports. They kind of financially assist and also give out scholarships. And in St. Pete, they don't have that nice of a program. They have Police Athletic League. But um, this young guy, Chris Lampley, he's been hauling these kids around, and they're middle school boys. There may be a few that are only in the fifth grade, but he brings them along. And those kids are always, Miss Susan, can we take the rest of the water home? Miss Susan, can we take the Gatorade? Yes, you can take it all. <laughs> but they love it. We feed them good, and, and you know they just keep coming back. Um, but they're really good. And one thing those water station people just love and eat up, whether they're these little kids, this is my favorite group of volunteers, or they're adults out on the beach, or a, I don't know if you guys know what the Rainbow Girls are. I think it's a middle school girl club that does things. I don't, I don't know exactly. They volunteer for us a lot, too. Um, but they love to hear thank you. Yeah. And I love to always tell people, say thank you to the volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. We try to announce it, but just running through, you know, thank you for your time, thank you, thank you, thank you. They love it. They always tell us they get the most thank yous they've ever gotten. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm telling them to tell you thank you. <laughs> so when you get done, keep moving. Don't just plop and stop in that when you get to that finish shoot. The only thing I don't have because they're not coming and I didn't want to bring another medal for this particular thing, the medals come on Friday. You're going to be hand, you're going to come across that finish line and you can run a little bit, slowly stop. You just really don't want to do this. Yeah. You're going to walk through, they're going to give you a medal. They'll hand it to you, try to help you put it around your neck, whatever you want to do. You're going to take your medal. The next thing you're going to get handed is a whole bottle of water. And at the very end, there'll be Gatorade in a cooler that you can get with a cup if you would like at the very end of the shoot. Mm -hmm. But you just kind of want to keep walking. You want to get your heart rate down. 
um, walk a little bit. And one thing that um, I always try to tell everybody, we're going to have such great food there. Some of that stuff is not what I really like to eat. It's clear sky. It's Capona's. It's Frenchies. But now ah, you get used to it, I guess. Um, so what I try to go to the table that has the bananas. Mm. And hopefully, I hope I have enough that I'm giving out these today. This lady got Pepsi and Gatorade oh, to donate these she? Gatorade bars. Oh, so right. we're going to pick those up. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, so that's that Gatorade bar. It, it's kind of wafery in the middle. It's not as heavy duty as it looks, you know, like when you see the other protein bars. Um, that's all hefty. It is kind of hefty, but not too heavy. But you want to eat something that has some protein in it. Um, I just happened to see those we had them up in the office because a lady brought some samples by and I thought, oh, let me take these with today. Yeah, so it worked yeah. out just perfect. Um, so, um, and then the main thing is make sure you stay dry and keep warm. And you're going to be wet, you're going to be sweating, but you kind of want to, especially with that breeze coming off that water right there at Coachman Park like it always is. So um, that's the, the, oh, that's the end of what's on that thing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get your metal, you're going to get your water and you're going to get some Gatorade in that chute if you'd like. Um, once you come out of that finish line chute, to the left will be the whole entourage from Sunstar. If you got a blister, if you're not feeling good, just take a left and the boys from Sunstar will completely take care of you. And there's some girls there usually too. They're to the left and as you turn to the right and you might have to swing a U-turn and come back, but you're going to see a small tent and there's gonna be a couple of volunteers sitting in there with these Chromebook kiosks. And you can walk up, the guy will have these hooked up to almost what looks like a little um, cash register rec receipt machine from Publix. Mm -hmm. And you, walk, you come walking up and they look at your bib number and they type in bib number four and hit enter and poof, out comes this piece of tape and it tells you exactly how you did because your exact time, if you're not using your own watch, is not going to probably be what matches, especially the 5K, because that clock's going to be running for the half marathon. But it'll tell you your exact time, like instantaneously, how you did in your, like how Sarah did in, in comparison to all the women that were racing today. And then it'll say how she did in her age group. Hmm, that's cool. But that's a preliminary result. Because we're going to have, especially in the 5K, we will have people that start the half marathon even though they were late and you know, oh man, I don't want to run this half marathon and they're going to turn around that 5k point and it's going to mess up oh. the results for a little while until John figures it out that they ran a world record half marathon time and they're coming across already <laughs> with the first couple of elite guys in the 5k. So um, it takes a little while, that's very unofficial results, but then we'll have the official results and the awards presentation on the stage at the same time in the park we're going to have, it's going to be like a circle of vendor tents and the very middle is mainly going to be geared towards kids. Mm -hmm. It's, I think the, I don't think it's a lightning. I think it's the Buccaneers are bringing their street team. Oh, nice. And um, there's going to be some other stuff because Casey's real in with the Bucks and the lightning and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly sure who's coming. Um, but there's going to be some kid stuff going on in there for them to, some restaurants. There'll be the food, the race food table. And then there's restaurants and I, I'd be lying if I say which one it is. They're going to either be serving beer or some kind of little mimosa-y drink at Clear Sky or Frenchies mm -hmm. or whichever one's going to be doing that. But so there's all that for you to check out. And there'll be people giving out more samples. Um, you've got a few already in your bag from a couple of the big sponsors. But um, yeah, there's going to be the St. Luke's. We'll have a tent there. Yep, we'll have a tent. And, um, and there's all that stuff to do. And once he gets the results final, probably do the 5K results first. And then we'll do the 10K results on the stage. The overall winners and stuff will come up. The first place overall. The second and third place will go to a table on the side. And they'll be able to pick up their awards. It's a medal for this race, I believe. And um, then and that'll be it for the day. So the biggest thing is to make sure when you go home that night that just think about it a little bit later on and try to stretch, especially, you know, like a hamstring stretch and a few other stretches that it, you've been doing. Just try to keep yourself, if you get home and you feel like you're, you're not feeling so great, some hip hurts, my knee hurts, I would highly recommend using ice for that first 48 hours. 
But if you are the heat queen and you like that heating pad, mm -hmm. we'll go straight to the heat. But sometimes if you've got inflammation and you put heat on it, it just makes it more inflamed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of what you feel comfortable with. But I totally would recommend ice for 48 hours. And a couple of ibuprofen or Tylenol, whatever you can take. Supposedly the people at the gut doctor so say, take try taking one Tylenol and one ibuprofen and, and try that. It's not as bad on your stomach. Mm -hmm. So um, anybody have any questions? Now you mentioned the, about the Steinmart, um, are they... The Steinmart parking lot is going to be available until it fills up. The library has a nice parking lot next to the, what used to be the old Steinmart. There's that up top, and then there's all kind of parking in those streets around there. Okay. So, that's the one we you actually can, parked at St. Luke's. Oh. And, and then we walked, and then we were right there at the bridge. Okay. And that. Oh, that was perfect. So, but um, that's like... That's a little bit farther, yeah. yeah. And then another like, another good, well-kept secret for that downtown Clearwater, for that Coachman Park venue, is the City Hall. Okay. That City Hall has a nice parking lot that a lot of people don't know so about. No, that. they're not going to be doing, like, if you park here, we're not going to tell you type thing. No, but, I mean, if it says, you know, loading have, zone, yeah, loading zone or something like that, it. but that City okay. Hall, there's no meters in okay. there. You can park in there all day long. There's even on the very end of that parking lot a little mm -hmm. set of stairs that steps you right down to Coachman Park. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had a coworker ask me about what the kids dash because it's I know the half marathon starts at seven, five k seven thirty, kids dash seven forty five. Yeah. She and her uh, daughter in law are registered for the five k, and know. then she's got her two grandsons. For I kids told dash. them not to have that kids dash so soon, yeah. and they can't really have the kids dash until I say the coast is clear. Okay. So we're gonna try to wait until we're gonna try to say at least thirty minutes, okay. if not she's forty like, minutes. How are we supposed to you know, she goes, yeah. well, I have the kids go and do. And so if you want to get back to her and, and say, go on and go do the 5K, okay. and then we're going to try to wait as long as we possibly okay, can. Sorry. And then we're going to say, oh, well, it's too busy in that finish line area, yeah. so we got to wait just a few more. So and how, it takes me a while. Like, it, it takes me a while to get those kids lined up because I have a bunch of Rojan girls from yeah. St. Pete High School. They're all going to have a yard sale sign okay. that says one to two-year-olds, three to four. Uh, oh, I always forget 18 right, months and under. Up to, up to the ending age, and we'll put those kids, those Rojan girls, down the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and those parents will go line up okay. behind them, and then we'll bring them out one at a time and leave just enough room for the half marathon, because it'll be straggling by that time. Okay. And we'll, we'll come in a lane for those people to get in and finish the race, and we'll start those kids off running. Okay, so, so I'll tell her to go ahead and do their thing, yep. and then they should be fine to yeah. come back in time. I saw that the other day, they still hadn't changed it, and I said, well, that's not gonna work yeah, that way. Yeah, so I was like, man, that's, I mean, for parents with their children, I'm yeah. just thinking, how? And the police <laughs> were like, how are you gonna do that? And I said, yeah. we're not. So they do it through, they do with age groups, and then yeah. Dash is like three, how many yards? So the, the, whatever that last sign is, like seven, there's inevitably gonna be a 10 year old in there. It's seven yeah. to nine, Okay. but there's a 10 year old in there that always sneaks in, mm -hmm. so, they're going to probably run about 75 to 100 yards. Okay. And the little kids, the smaller they get, those one to two year olds are usually with their parents, so they're probably going to do a 20 yard dash, and then okay. they'll do like a 40 yard dash. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, um, yeah. How about anybody else? Yeah. What would what would you recommend the last training day? What I would recommend is doing nothing on Friday. I would rest, stretch maybe go for a little five or ten minute walk and be done with it and that's totally what i do i never run on the day before um rest and i wouldn't even run more than two miles on thursday i would take it easy okay yeah because you guys are actually off that plan you're beyond that plan now right because you finished it we're yeah but we're we're doing monday wednesday friday okay yeah 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 mm -hmm. back that up so Go back to back Wednesday, Thursday, but don't go more than two miles on Thursday, and then just take Friday off. Okay. And you've been, you guys have been doing so good with that plan. I'll be honest with you, you could get the sniffles on Monday and probably not run all week and still do just fine in that race because you've got your body attuned to it. You've been doing so good, but try to, you know, go and follow it right, right to the end. Okay. So you kind of have to adjust sometimes when the race day. You know, a lot of those plans think race day is on Sunday when it's not. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Um, Oh, it says it from for the 5K. When do you think it might wrap up for the 5K? The award ceremony and everything. Yeah. Probably like 10ish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and there should be a lot of stuff for you guys to do, you know, until until 10. Checking all those booths, eating that food from those three restaurants. <laughs> um, yeah. 
my dogs are doing the corgi races at in Oldsmar. Oh, <laughs> so oh, I'm to get them to a race. We're all racing one day. So. Oh my gosh, what time is that? <laughs> it's at one o'clock in Oldsmar, but I think oh. we can do it. Okay. Yeah, get them there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Hey, um, we have to run, they have to run. <laughs> that's true, that's true. So anybody have any other questions about all the stuff? We advertised like when we sent out like an all company email just to tell them about the seminar and then the race day packet pickup. We also listed the different locations that you gave me for the other days of that next Yes, week and that's totally so fine. Can, as, everyone's packets are the gonna only be thing at the right? other packet pickups, if you're picking yeah. up more than your own, all they have to do is get a, have a picture text, or text picture of that other person's that and it's, if it's a minor, we don't care about that. Okay. But we, that's, and mainly we do that just so that uh, somebody else knows somebody's picking up that packet. Okay. But that's totally fine. They can come, and the, I think we're going to that Frenchie's in Dunedin and that outpost place. Yeah. So that's not that that's far not for you guys. Bad from here. Yeah. yeah. So just, you know, we gave them those options just in case and things like yeah. that. I think a lot of the employees have made arrangements for a friend of theirs that's going to be here on Monday if they're not going to be at this location can get it. But okay. we just, you know. I just want to make sure that that would even be would still be available for yeah, other locations yep, that they yep, to Yeah, and I, like I said, the best thing is that label being on the back of that bib mm -hmm. for that person that picks up several. Mm -hmm. They just have to reach down in that goodie bag and say, oh, this is for Sandy. Oh, this mm -hmm. is for Sally, you know. Okay, perfect. So, um, oh, here is, <laughs> after about nine rounds of artwork, this is kind of what your bib's going to look like when you get it next week. Oh, okay. okay. And this one is for the... 5K, I think this is the color. So it has a bridge in the background. I'll have your name there. Um, three bridge race and all that kind of stuff. But that's it. That's about that's about after five rounds of art and me telling them no, no, and no and again. <laughs> so um, it'll be very similar in size to this with the name on it and everything. Mm -hmm. And again, the four pinholes um, and the gear the gear check thing if you want to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? This is perfect today. I saw these and I was like, so I'm going to give you guys your first long sleeve training shirt. Oh, wow. And it's, I think I got just the right size.